Yay Networks. And it feels really nice that I'm not the only one in a relationship with a severe disability. Yeah, that's so nice for you. Welcome back to Just Hair Mayhem. Welcome back. My parents are on the way. They are. From the East Coast. They're on a plane right now. We are frantically trying to get the house ready for them. Yes. So and we, yet here we sit. And we need to bang out this podcast. <laughs> the clock is ticking. Before we begin, I would like to share a, uh, the, what is that? Sleep talk that I wrote down? A dream sleep talk. Sleep talk. Shane talks in his sleep. He does it almost every single night whenever, like he falls asleep. And then if I move it and it like wakes him a little, he begins to talk to me almost every single night. And some nights I'm too tired to like care about it. And other nights I will begin to write it down on my phone and try to engage with him. That's what I did two nights ago. And before we start, I'm going to read what he said to me. Oh, and let me just preface this by saying, I, I, we just talked about this a couple episodes ago, but I'm a scaredy cat. So at night I'm very, very, very easily spooked. I would like to preface it by saying, why must my dreamscape be like, the pits of hell. Nightmares. <laughs> Why do I automatically enter into like nightmare scape? I know. So I, I'm turning over and Shane starts to go. <laughs> and so like I'm fear, like, like scared. Yeah, scared. So I tired. I'm like, what's wrong? And I wrote that down. I wrote down what's wrong. So I go, what's wrong? Mm-hmm. Shane responds. Should I read my line? With almost the worst thing he could say. But I couldn't understand what your words were. But so, like, right, it, I'm gonna it read took it. him a couple times to enunciate. I'm going to read it how it probably sounded the first time yeah. first. Yeah. And then I'll read it nicely. Yeah. <laughs> <That> was, <laughs> really good. And so then I'm like, what? I'm being attacked by the smiler. Uh. <laughs> I'm being attacked by the smiler. And then I wrote whines. He was, was like, whining. Whine. So then I what said, a horrifying thing to I say. I say, who's the smiler? Because what the hell? <laughs> what? And this, you say. This reply is going to make or break Hannah's night of sleep. And I say, You'll never understand. <laughs> what? I was being honest. So then I just had to go to bed. I was like, okay, good night. Thanks. I wonder who the smiler is. I don't know. And why she was attacking me. I don't know. I, th- I thought you said spider. So the first time I was like, what? And you said it again. And I was like, the spider. And you were like, the smiler. The sm- there's a man that visits me <laughs> named the smiler in my sleep. That is unfair. That's probably a thing. Like, I bet people are going to comment being like, the smiler is a blah, blah, blah legend that visits people. Yeah, when he visits you, you know you have seven days to live. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> but I also have to tell them about my less scary but more absurd dream that I had, I think, the same night. Finally, not a scary dream for you, at least. Just Still entertaining. Just uncertain enough <laughs> to, like, I don't deserve this. Okay? So I had a dream. That Hannah and I were in a playground, like park area. Creepy. And Hannah was riding the swings. Riding? Yeah, you were swinging on the swings. What do you? What? <laughs> what verb? <she laughs> on had. The, like Hannah was swinging, or Hannah was on the swings. Hannah had mounted. Riding is just. <laughs> Hannah had mounted the swing set. <laughs> and was gyrating oh, back God. and forth. It I'm was swinging. Big. No, swinging is fine. Hannah was swinging on a swing set. And she was lamenting the fact that she had to leave soon for a sound check. Oh. In this dreamland, Hannah must have been a performer yep. of some kind. Got my sound check coming up. And you up. were pissed. And you were like, oh, I have to stop swinging. I have to get a sound check. Okay, a little weird, but fine. I lift up a garden hose. <laughs> the end of a garden hose, and I say, I have to do sound check too. Cool. And I begin to sing into the open end of the garden hose. I, I wrap up my sound check. It went well. I sang into the hose. I bring the hose down and begin to pee into it. And I say, 
to Hannah. They like me to do a sound check before I pee into the hose. Who was they? The smiley man? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> So I say very lo- I am the logic in this dream. Uh huh. I say Hannah says I don't think they need you to do a sound check for that. True, very true. <laughs> and I just as logically reply, no, it's because I use it for poop too. <laughs> if you can't follow that logic, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You and your dreams. I don't know what it is. My brain just like goes nuts every night. It picks random words and forms a whole yep. world around them. Hose, sound check, poop, swings. None of those things are like anything I can point to I know. in my life and be like, oh, I was thinking about that. Nope. Not even the smiling man. <laughs> Not even the smiler. Maybe I am the smiling man. Oh, God. No. <laughs> That's creepy. All right. What else are we doing today? We are going to talk about a a syndrome, a syndrome that I possess. That I, until this week, genuinely did not know Hannah possessed. And I think I've told you about it before, though. I don't think you did. It's a really weird, it's a a rare condition. It's a big enough condition. And it runs in my family. That I feel like I'd be like, oh yeah, I know my wife has that. Yeah. I don't think I do. Okay. I did not know that. Well, but hasn't, but like Mike talked to you about it. I don't think so. The whole genetic thing? No. Maybe you weren't in the room. So I'm finding out new information about my wife's medical That's nice history. for you. It is good. Learning new things about each other. And you're going to learn about it with me. Yes. And then we are going to play another round of Funeral Home or Caregiving Agency. Which is a game that Hannah made up last week. Yes. And boy, did I love it. To wrap up right now, we have a little housekeeping. Yes. About the future of your mayhem. We do. Hannah, would you like to explain? Sure. So we have this episode, then we're going to have one more episode before the end of the year. Yeah, we're going to take a few weeks. It's going to be a yep. special yep, one end, end of final, season one. Yeah, <laughs> season finale. <laughs> and then we're going to take some time off and begin early in the new year. Yep. We're gonna have a With season two. Season two, that's going to have a... A new look, a new feel. Season one was <laughs> over a year long. It so was. I don't know how long season two is going to be. But <laughs> <laughs> If you had told us a year ago that we would actually create like over 50 podcast episodes, I'd be like, no. I can't believe we it. Won't, we'll flake out. We yep. won't do it. <laughs> I know. But we did it. <laughs> we did it. And it was a lot of fun. It was. A lot of mayhem. All right. So now that we have done our housekeeping, should we move on to my condition? Yes, for let's take a quick break. Yes. So I can re- review your medical documents. Mm-hmm. And then we'll be right back. Okay. This year for our third wedding anniversary, Shane and I got one of our favorite photos from our wedding day painted, hand painted into a real painting huh? by Paint Your Life. I mean, I'm going to show it to you again because we love it so much. We really do. This painting has a place of honor in our heart. It does. And our home. It does. <laughs> Paint Your Life transforms your photos into one-of-a-kind, beautiful hand-painted portraits by professional artists at an affordable price. You can order a custom-made hand-painted portrait in less than five minutes and have it delivered in less than two weeks. It's all super fast. Yeah, their website makes it super easy. The hardest part was picking rich photo. I know. We wanted to forever memorialize in paint. Every time I look at the painting, I have a new favorite part, but right now, as I'm looking at it, I think my favorite part is my bouquet. The flowers are so beautiful, and I loved my bouquet at our wedding. So to have it painted so perfectly, I just love looking at it. Yeah, my favorite part is my smile. Oh, <laughs> just kidding. I'm kidding, everyone. My favorite part of the painting, and I've said this before, is just how happy we look. Yeah. Faces are really, I mean, I know I'm not a professional, but faces are so hard to capture accurately yeah. in painting, and they absolutely nailed it. They really did. I can't believe how well they did our hair. Like, I'm just not a painter, so I'm like, how did you do that? Like, why does it look so real? I think what's going on here is we just built really think we look hot. Yeah, yeah, we're like, hmm, we look pretty good. (laughs) This holiday season, you can give the most meaningful gift you have ever given from paintyourlife.com. And there's no risk. If you don't love the final painting, your money is refunded, guaranteed. And right now, as a limited time offer, get 20% off your painting. That's right, 20% off. And free shipping. 
To get this offer, text the word junkyard to 87204. That's junkyard to 87204. Text junkyard to 87204. Paint your life, celebrate the moments that matter most. Message and data rates may apply. See terms for details. Thank you to Paint Your Life for sponsoring this episode. We're back. Shane, it is a dark, dark night in Connecticut. Oh, we're doing this narrative style. We are in 2000, let's say 2004. All right, if you're going to do narrative on, style, you have to have the details. This was ongoing. Yeah, but I'm just, this is a thing that I had a lot, but I'm right. just picking one night. We are in Connecticut, 2004. Yes. I'm tucked into bed. How old are you? Uh, nine, eight, I guess. Young baby Hannah. Little me tucked into bed. She's already six feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> no, then I would have been 11. Okay, so I am in my bed. It is dark. Lights are out. I'm trying to fall asleep. Mm-hmm. I'm, the smiling man enters the room. <laughs> I start to get a feeling that is familiar to me, and it is horrific. I hate this feeling. I'm becoming distressed. I'm becoming anxious. I'm like, no, 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 no. Please don't happen. What does it feel like? The feeling, it's hard. Like, it's hard to explain this feeling. I'm just going to say what I did then. Okay. uh, It it doesn't matter. So I'm getting this feeling and I'm like, you know what? No, like not today. This is not, this is not happening tonight. I'm freaking going to make this not happen. I sit up. I turn on the light to try to make this stop. I think maybe it's because I'm laying down. I sit up, turn on the light. The entire room begins to spin around in and out, wow. bigger and smaller. And that was the first time that I was like, this is a real thing that is not just like my anxiety. Yeah. I am physically watching this occur. Like you you were of sound mind. Yes. You weren't like sleepy. I was sitting there like, holy moly, this is actually crazy. Compared to just straight up dizziness. Yeah, I wasn't dizzy. Okay. I didn't feel dizzy at all. I felt totally fine. Because it sounded like Everything dizzy. around me. No, not dizzy at right, all. Right. I wasn't, because I've had like vertigo, like type yeah. stuff. No, 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 no. I wasn't dizzy. It was everything in the room was changing shape, getting. The so actual. I, was, like, I just did like a really hard pee oh. into the microphone. Uh, go ahead, what? So like an actual visual. Yes. Like objects in the room were changing. Visual. Size and. Auditory. I have like a, yeah, because I had my Harry Potter tape playing uh, that I would listen to every night. Of course. My singular tape that I decided was my good night soundtrack. Her safe tape. That would get like louder and quieter. Mm-hmm. You know, like anything in my hands would feel bigger and smaller. In like a pulsing manner, like in and out and yeah. in. Okay. Kind of. Just, I mean, yeah. relatively, yeah. Okay. It wasn't like it's not rhythmic. Like in, out, in, out, in, out. It's well, like, oh, that even gives me the feeling, though. Oh. It is kind of like that. Oh, it would get faster and slower. Like, Let me see if I anything, can make it happen. Stop it. Anything that could get bigger and smaller, faster and slower, louder, it would just alternate, okay. which is just, it was, yeah. oh my God. It sounds very like, distant here, Dan. Yes. So this would happen to me a lot. Uh, always at night while you're finally asleep? Like, I think it was always at night. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't think I ever had it like, in school, like during the daytime, I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure it was always at night. Um, but that was the first time that it happened when it wasn't like I had it a lot in my dreams. I would have nightmares of it happening. That was the first time that I like turned on the light and it was yeah actually still happening, not just like in the dark. Okay, so I mean, I if that happened to me, I may just go through life being like, oh, sometimes when I'm falling asleep, I have these weird yeah. like weird dizzy kind of. And hallucination I did. spells. That's what I did. Okay. Because like, what are you supposed to tell your pediatrician? Me at eight years old is supposed to be like, hey, doc, sometimes things get bigger and smaller. And I didn't even know how to say it at that time. Yeah, was- but my dreams would be like I was holding a hair, like a strand of hair. Oh, my God. I can like still feel it. It's so horrible. It gives me a horrible pit in my stomach. I'd be holding like I don't even want to touch my hair because of it. Um, I'd be holding like a strand of hair and then uh-huh. it would grow into like a huge like rope yeah, it's bizarre. and then it would get small again. It's so and wild. what I'm describing is not even distress. Like that's not distressing on its own, but mm-hmm. it was accompanied by a feeling a that was dread. Hor- yeah. Horrible. Okay. Which is just like, I don't know why. And that, I mean, even now as a, you know, yeah. an adult, it's difficult yeah. to describe. So how an eight year old yeah. be like, yeah, oh, this is what's happening. And when I told my doctor that I was having like, remember the breathing things and she said it was anxiety and I was told to breathe into a paper bag, yeah. like, I don't think that if I had said something to that doctor that she would have been like, hey, I know what this is. She would have been like, okay, kiddo, maybe try the paper bag again. But in fact, it is a real yes. thing. And 
This is what I learned. You it told me yes. about it. Go ahead. It is called Alice in Wonderland syndrome. Great name for this condition, yeah. by the way. So it's named because the guy who wrote Alice in Wonderland, Lewis Carroll, like it, it's very similar in description. And they think that he himself had that based on the way that he wrote the book. They think that he had this like yeah. perceptual distortion huh. thing. So I'm going to read to you. For, well, actually, first, I'll tell you how I found out what it was. Okay. I actually like I don't know exactly how I found out, but it had to do with my brother. He's a doctor. And at some point in my life, we I think he honestly asked me, like, has this ever happened to you? Because it was happening to my niece. Yeah. And like he was like and my mom had had it. And I think he when he was little had it. So he knew my mom had had it. And then he asked me if I had it. That's how. Yeah. But basically he was like. I even Googled like a genetic link and it's like, it's thought to maybe be like genetically passed, but there's no actual like proof, proof of it. And yeah. he was like, maybe our family can be proof. Like I want this to be like the thing. <laughs> do a study. Do a, someone do a study on this family. So yeah, it's definitely, it runs in my family because otherwise it says that like they, it's caused by a bunch of stuff. It can be like epilepsy. It can be um, Epstein-Barr that you get like mm -hmm. infected with. It can be a bunch of different stuff that triggers it. Mm -hmm. And then I guess you just like have it, but it's most common in children uh, I've I have not had it since I was maybe you 15, oh, 15 wow. or 16. Yeah, yeah, I haven't had it. But I can still remember the feeling. And that's probably why like it, it's you know very well could be the case that you have told me you've had this and I forgot. Yeah. But as I really don't remember, it may also be true that you forgot to talk about this. Yeah. Like it hasn't happened to you in ten years, you know. Yeah. So. so this is a this is an article from the Global Security for Health no Global Center for Health Security oh. sorry <laughs> um, and from UNMC and it's about a nine year old named Josh who would have these episodes I'm not going to read his description it's very similar to mine like things would get bigger and smaller his mom's voice would get slower and you know like faster sounds like you're tripping yeah <laughs> it, it really is like that uh, and it said. It says that Alice in Wonderland syndrome affects the way people perceive the world around them and can distort how they experience their own bodies and the space it occupies. Wow. These can include distortions in vision, imagine seeing people's faces change, blah, blah, blah. Um, there's 40 types of visual distortions that you can get. I'm changing my face in the camera. Stop it. I'm doing facial distortions. Other symptoms include seeing people or objects moving in slow motion or moving unnaturally fast. You can hear loved ones speaking oddly slow or unnaturally fast. Huh. Your own body parts can get bigger and smaller, like your hand yeah. you know, is part of the the thing. Wow. Isn't that interesting? It's so interesting. Yeah. The closest thing I've had to it is I've had a phenomenon where while I'm falling asleep, inside the vacuum of my brain, yeah. I feel like I'm in the middle of an endless like black expanse. Yeah. And I can feel the edges of it even though it's endless, shrinking and then getting bigger. Oh my God. But when I open my eyes, it instantly sucks. Yeah. So it's only, it's different, but you know, similar. Yeah. In that way. And it's a very, that feeling is like almost a nice one. Yeah. When it happens, it's like kind of like You're riding around. waves. <laughs> yeah. 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 Flow down. So uh, I'm trying to relate to your yeah. condition, but I can't. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> well, if anyone else that's watching this has had Alice in Wonderland syndrome, let us know. I hope that someone out there has had this and doesn't know there's a, yeah. a name and the condition behind it. Yeah. Is it like detrimental no. in any way other than like emotionally? No, it depends on what it's from. Like if it is a sign of seizures, obviously like the seizures yeah. can be a problem. But right. if it's just what you have, then no, it's not like dangerous. If anyone has Alice in Wonderland syndrome and is, you know, detrimentally affected by it. I, I'm not making fun of that fact. I, it yeah, nine-year-old me, nine <laughs> me would be like, uh, mm -hmm, it's very detrimental. It occurred to me as I'm laughing about it. That like, no, but it's not like a sign of a brain bleed okay. like for, you know, just on its yeah. own. It's it's not like that. In that case, I've made fun of everyone that has it. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's, I mean, I was astounded to learn or relearn that you lived with this I know. condition that I never knew about. And it feels really nice to know that it's a real thing and not yeah. just like something I... Because it feels so fake. It feels like such a weird thing to say. And it feels really nice that I'm not the only one in a relationship with a severe disability. Yeah, that's so nice for you.
Am I getting bigger or smaller okay. right now? Should we move on mm. and take stop it? Huh? Take a break. That's why, like when when mute like the fan, we use white noise on your phone uh -huh. when it gets too loud. You know how I say I panic? Oh yeah. It's that kind of a thing. Interesting. It's like I swear to God, it's related to that. It probably is. Because that would happen to me in my room. The fan would get so loud, even though it was not, and then I would be like, "Oh my god!" I did doctors. If you're interested in studying, oh yes. my wife, I allow, I consent. <laughs> let's get her under a microscope. You give your consent. Let's get her under a microscope. <laughs> get this brain analyzed and see what's happening. We're going to take a break and then we're going to be back with a funeral home or caregiving agency. My favorite game. Love it. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you to ZocDoc for sponsoring this episode. Is the room getting bigger and smaller all around you? Shane. Do you feel like you need to find a doctor fast and easily? <laughs> ZocDoc would be perfect for you. I don't need a doctor for this specific issue. But okay, if Shane? you did, it's over. If you did, ZocDoc would make it a breeze. That is very true. I could have used it when I was eight. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top rated patient reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. These doctors all have verified reviews from actual, real patients, and the typical wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is between just 24 to 72 hours. You can even score same-day appointments. Once you find the doctor you want, you can book them immediately with just a few app taps. No more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist, which is my favorite part. I don't like making phone calls. No phone calls. Go to ZocDoc.com slash junkyard and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash junkyard. ZocDoc.com slash junkyard. All right. For our second to last episode of the year, our penultimate episode of the year it's time to play caregiver agency or funeral home i've got a really good one to kick us off i think this is going to stump you this game is very simple hannah's going to read me the name of either a funeral home or a caregiver agency <laughs> and i have to guess which one it is and it is harder and than you think sadly one of the hardest games I've ever played. <laughs> okay, you ready for number one? Uh huh. Day and night. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Day and night. Good luck. It really gives caregiver vibes. Yeah. Uh, day and night. Maybe it's a full service funeral home. Where, Aren't they all full service? Well, no, I didn't. Say. <laughs> Which funeral home no. is not full service? I mean, maybe they're open twenty four seven. If you lose someone at you know at two p two a.m. Mm -hmm. and you want to get that funeral done, boom! It, before of course the sun comes the up. The classic two a.m. funerals. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I'm going with caregiver agency. It must be day and night removals and cremation. No, oh, <laughs> like body removals. Uh -huh. Oh, uh -huh. why day? Just say, day and night. Oh, uh, yeah, yes. Although, night removals is not a good name. It's day and night. Like, they're always open. You were right. You were right. It's <laughs> morbid. I. They're all morbid. <laughs> they're very morbid. Shane. Okay. Ever loving. Oh, jeez. All right. You know what? And that's, that's one word. Ever loving. If it is a caregiver agency, that kind of bothers me. I do not think that the caregivers that are you know, paid to go into random people's paid homes. Paid not enough, probably. They are, don't get me wrong, lovely, wonderful people doing a very important job, mm -hmm. but they don't love the people that they're helping. Yeah. Maybe in certain instances, maybe. Yeah. But as a, a rule, no. Ever loving, get over yourself. <laughs> Funeral home, lock it in. Ever loving home health. Damn it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> This is so hard. I know. Okay. Divine integrity. Oh, it better, I swear to God, it's better be a funeral home. <laughs> I have to say integrity. funeral home. If, if divine integrity is a <laughs> caregiver agency trying to like, uh, okay, go ahead. Home health care. Oh my God. 
<laughs> integrity. I'm surprised the word integrity didn't give give it away. Integrity. I mean, but you want your your end of life services to yeah, be. Yeah, I'm divine. Really, good. divine, divine is ridiculous. Yeah, come on. You're helping people go to the bathroom. Yeah. You're not their savior. I know. Okay, <laughs> friends. <laughs> That's all caps. I wonder if it stands for something. It's all caps, and there's a it's a chain. There's a couple of like uh, location hubs. Uh, I don't know what friends stands for, but it's it's just friends. Family respite in <laughs> every everyone's everyone's neighborhood. <laughs> uh huh. Da da. <laughs> All right, friends. What is uh, that? Your agency. Friends funeral home. Oh my God, you what? haven't gotten a single one. <laughs> I've done everyone wrong. Friends funeral home. What is that? I don't know. There's a couple of them though. Is that just trying to be like we're friendly? I like, think it stands for something. No. But yeah, it, it probably okay. is just or it's but probably someone's last name. No, it's all caps, which is weird. Yeah. Uh, lighthouse. That makes me feel like. So, uh, like heavenly, like a, a beacon of hope. Mm. You know, Lighthouse memorials and receptions. I got one. You got one. I got one. How many quit while I'm ahead? What? How many quit while I'm ahead? Let's I do, guess I'm not let's ahead. Let's do one more. I'm You're down, not ahead. <laughs> I'm down six to one. Here's the last one. Halo. Halo. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a terrier version. <laughs> I want it to be a funeral home. <laughs> <laughs> Sentence. It's a terrier agency, and they all have a god complex that they should not have. This is so mean to these is it, companies. Uh, terrier are important and great, but the people that make yeah. the companies that do this work need to step off of their ivory tower yeah. and realize that you're providing a. My my caregiver agency would be called prompt and reliable. Yes. There you go. That's what even, you want. Even call it like respectful. Dignity, listen, we listen to you. Dignity plus <laughs> home help, home help care with compassion. Oh yeah, that's nice. Okay, even ready? compassion is annoying Halo. me, and I made it up. <laughs> All right, so Halo, your final guess is. I uh, don't it, wait. What was it? If it's Terry Ever, I'm done. I'm pissed. Halo home care. Oh my god. <laughs> Do you want to do one more? Or you go as opposed to devil home care. Yeah, you know all the evil caregiver agencies. Devil horn home care. There. Yeah, <laughs> we got Halo home care. Well, I think it's safe to say I'm not very good at this game. I don't think anyone could be good at this game. No, why do funeral homes and caregiver agencies have such overlapping names? I love it. <laughs> I think it is the funniest thing ever. <laughs> Because you almost always get it wrong, so it's so satisfying for me to find these names and be like, "He's never gonna guess." It them. really is, and you were very like, "Shane, you will not look at this list." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shane kept being like, "Oh, I'll look some up for you." Mm 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 mm. Cheater, <laughs> cheater, cheater. I just want to win. I know. All right, all right. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Our penultimate episode. Yes. One of my favorite words. One more. All right, let's let's go. Leave. <laughs> If you enjoyed this, please like, review, subscribe. Uh, I'll leave a comment, all of that. And it's a junkyard out there. And wait a minute. Is our trash hauler getting bigger? Oh, my God. It's getting bigger. It's bigger. Oh, my God. Oh, no, wait. Smaller, smaller, smaller. Oh, what is happening? Okay. Goodbye, everyone.